the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. What do you think about that? Hmm? Would, would some of us be offended today if Paul was here and he come up to you and said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? <laughs> would you? Hmm? Now you can either answer that. There's only two answers to that. There's only two. Is yes or no. Anything else is unbelief. Anything else is, is denying God's word. It's so, isn't it? There's only two answers to that. If Paul was to come up to you today and you being a Christian, you being a Christian now, he said, have you received the Holy Well, or since you believed, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Believe what? What are you supposed to believe? Hmm? What, what's that referring to? Since you believed. Believed what? You have to believe something, wouldn't you? Hmm? Is, is he talking here to the unbeliever? Hmm? Would he be going up to an unbeliever and says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Believe what? <laughs> He's not talking to the unbeliever. And Paul didn't know the state of these men when he ran into them. He, just, he knew they were disciples. But they were John's disciples. Amen. So here he asked them the question. He said, let me read it again. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? He said unto unto." And they said unto him, We've not so much as heard. So, so these people here, they hadn't even heard about the Holy Spirit, had they? They had no idea what Paul was even talking about. And he said unto he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism of repentance. The, the, John the Baptist. And then said Paul, verily, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, which is on Jesus. Amen. And when they heard this, you know, these people here, we need to understand some things as just human beings. Every one of us has a will. Right down on the inside of you, you have a will. Amen. And normally, nor under, under normal circumstances, no one can make you do what you don't want to do. Now can they? Hmm? No one can make you do that unless they do it by force or unless they uh, are, are uh, uh, some kind of bribery or something, something, some, something to put leverage that you're not, nobody's going to do anything they don't want to do. Is that right? Amen. And that's, just, and that's just the way it is. Every single person on this earth has a will. And that's why when the gospel's preached, you have a will. What do you will to believe? Now, when it comes to God, you can submit your will to God's will. And you can say, Lord, I am willing to do what you want me to do. Now, what do you want me to do? Amen. 
someone says, and God might say, which he's normally not going to say this to you. He says, well, I want you to go preach. Let's just let's use that as an example. Well, I, where do you want me to go preach? And he says, over in Africa. And you say, well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you might even say, I'm not going to do that. Well, would you be submitting your will to him? No, it's your own will. You don't will to, right? I don't want to. Minister's wife one time, God, and it was the plan of God. See, people think, let me say before I tell you this, some people think, well, if I submit my my will to God, it's untelling us what he'd want me to do. You might be surprised what God wants you to do. But I can tell you this, that it won't be anything that you don't want to do. Not if you will let the Lord bless